Good morning dear students. Today I am here again to discuss a new topic with you all. Today we will discuss Geography Chapter 1 Environment. I know students environment is not a new word for you all. Very often in your daily lives you get to hear this environment word in newspapers, news channels, many debates and in the family or friends. This is the hot topic these days which is being discussed every now and then. So here in this chapter we will discuss details about the environment. So students today in this chapter we will cover the following concepts. First what is environment? Second components of environment. Third, what does natural environment compose of? Fourth, ecology and ecosystem. Fifth, human environment. Now moving on to the main topic students, that is environment. What is environment? Environment in very simple language means anything that surrounds us. Everything which is surrounding us is environment. Environment is the word derived from the French word environer. E-N-V-I-R-O-N-E-R. -E it means neighborhood. Neighborhood stands for the area surrounding us. Environment includes everything essential for our survival. It supports life system. From water to air, food and land we live on. These are all part of environment. Environment is of two types, natural environment and human made environment. Natural environment which exists naturally also has two types, biotic and abiotic. Biotic stands for living. Non-biotic or abiotic stands for non-living. On the other hand, we have the human-made environment. Human-made environment means environment which is created by humans, where human hands are involved. That is human-made environment. Humans modify environment according to their needs. To satisfy their own needs, humans develop certain things. Like there are industries, there are buildings. We make it for our own needs. But due to those needs, environment gets affected. Pollution from industries. Huge buildings put pressure on land. And ultimately, it results into natural disasters. When we put so much pressure on environment, when we do not look for environment, when we do not care for environment, environment affects humans and it leads to natural disasters. Disasters like earthquakes, tsunamis, forest fires, etc. Moving on to the next slide children, 
where you get to see components of environment figure 1.1 given at page number 2 of your book. Components of environment means the different parts of environment. First is natural environment. Second, human beings as part of environment. Third, human made environment. First, natural environment. It includes water, air, land and all living things. Whereas, in the human as environment, the second part, second component of environment, we have individual as part of human environment. Then there is family, community, then it leads to religion, educational needs, economic needs and to control all humans in a territory we need political situation. So this creates human environment. And there is one more environment component that is human made where human hands are involved to create the environment. There you have buildings, parks, bridges, roads, industries, monuments, etc. So these all are components of environment. First is natural environment. Second, human being as an environment. Third, human made environment. Now coming to the next slide students, we have components of environment in detail. We have already discussed the components of environment in the form of a concept map which is given at page number 2 as figure 1.1. There also we discussed or we classified environment into three different forms. Natural environment, human made environment and humans as an environment. The very first thing is natural components of environment. Natural environment comprise of atmosphere, lithosphere and hydrosphere. Atmosphere means the thin layer of air that surrounds the earth. Lithosphere is the solid crust or the hard top layer of the earth. And hydrosphere means all the domains of water like rivers, lakes, seas, oceans, etc. These are all different sources of water and they comprise hydrosphere. So this is all we have as natural components of natural environment. When we put all these together, atmosphere, lithosphere and hydrosphere, they all together make up biosphere where living organisms exist. If any one of these is missing, if atmosphere is not there, only lithosphere and hydrosphere is there, living things cannot survive. We need oxygen to breathe in, which is available in atmosphere. Now coming to lithosphere, if lithosphere does not exist, we have only atmosphere and hydrosphere. Life cannot exist. Where would humans live? Where would we grow plants? Where would we grow food? And where would we construct the buildings? Same way. If we take out hydrosphere from the natural components of environment. 
only atmosphere and lithosphere are available life cannot exist because living beings require water let it be humans let it be animals or let it be plants they all need water for their survival so this is all we have under natural components coming next to human made components that means man made components of environment where human hands are involved in making certain things to fulfill human needs we have buildings roads factories farms bridges monuments parks etc we took up many names all these names which we took these are all made by humans building road factories monuments parks etc let it be even your cars they are all human made components now coming to human as a component of environment it ranges from one single individual to group of human beings families communities to states and countries when we talk about countries who all are living in the countries humans states humans who all make different communities humans who all make up families humans so this is also an important part of an environment by which environment is also affected so all these three were the different components of environment students earlier also we discussed about natural environment and there are two different dimensions two different domains natural environment comprises of two one biotic two abiotic components biotic means the world of living organisms plants and animals animals also include humans as social animals abiotic that is the world of non living elements example land that is lithosphere air that is atmosphere water that is hydrosphere coming to the natural environment in detail now we've already discussed the two different components of natural environment that is biotic and abiotic natural environment comprises of land air water they come under abiotic whereas plants and animals come under biotic environment coming to the very first of abiotic component lithosphere lithosphere is the solid hard part of the earth the hard uppermost layer of the earth is known as lithosphere it is covered by a thin layer of the soil the soil which we see under that we have rocks and minerals they all collectively make lithosphere various landforms can be seen on lithosphere like mountains plateaus plains valleys hills 
etc. On land, you get to see mountains, yes, plateaus, plains, valleys, hills and many other landforms. Landforms are even found over the continents throughout the world. You get to see such landforms on lithosphere. Not only on continents but also on the ocean floors we have different landforms available. We can see different landforms on the ocean floors. Lithosphere provides us with forest, grasslands for grazing that is used for animals, agricultural land and human settlements because we have a solid part of the earth as lithosphere and it has soil. So forests can be grown on soil, grass can be grown only on soil, we can do agricultural activities on land or soil which is part of lithosphere. We can construct buildings or humans can be settled in the area only because there is lithosphere that is the solid hardened uppermost layer of the earth crust. Now coming to the second domain of abiotic environment, atmosphere. It is the thin layer of air. Air includes mixture of gases. We have atmosphere because of the gravitational force of the earth holds it around the earth. That is why the life exists only on earth because we have atmosphere all the essential or important gases which are required for the life or human survival or living beings survival they are available in the atmosphere available on earth. Atmosphere also protects us from the harmful rays coming from the sun ultraviolet rays and scorching heat of the sun. So atmosphere has number of uses. It provides us different gases for the survival of living beings. It protects us from the harmful rays and scorching heat of the sun. Atmosphere comprises of a number of gases, dust and water vapor. These all are part of atmosphere. Number of gases, dust particles and water vapor. The changes in the atmosphere produce change in weather and climate too. Whenever there is change in the atmosphere, it affects weather and climate. Coming to the third and the most important domain of the atmosphere under abiotic components we have hydrosphere. We have already discussed about it that it comprises of all the water domains on our planet such as lakes, rivers, seas and oceans. Without this living organisms cannot survive, cannot live. It is essential for all the living beings. Let it be plants, animals or humans. So it is a very important domain of the environment. Students, what we learnt till now was the domains of the earth. Now, Try to understand it through a picture given at page number 3 as domains of the earth. You can see a farmer cutting
cultivating his field a bus moving on the road and a number of houses can be seen behind they are all using lithosphere because there is hard surface solid crust under it you can see mountains behind so what is providing them the stability where they are stuck to that is also on lithosphere that is they are part of lithosphere only these are the different landforms of lithosphere coming to hydrosphere now you can see a boat moving and ducks playing in the water and there is a field also if fields are to be irrigated if crops are to be grown well how would they grow they need water and as humans 70% of our body is made up of water 70% in our body is water that means we cannot survive without water that is a part of hydrosphere then you can see a plane moving in sky there you have your atmosphere that is mixture of gases which is required by all living beings plants need carbon dioxide for the process of photosynthesis human beings need oxygen to breathe for their survival so where all these three domains interact lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere it comprises biosphere this shows interdependence of living beings and non living things which interact with one another which cannot survive with one another and their interaction with one another makes biosphere let's move on to the concept of biosphere now what is biosphere plant and animal kingdom together make the biosphere animals plants and humans they are all part of biosphere a narrow zone of the earth a part of the earth where land water and air interact with one another and they support the life system life system of what plants humans and animals that makes a biosphere so in all together lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere plus plant and animal kingdom they all together make up the biosphere if there is any change in the condition of atmosphere lithosphere or the hydrosphere it is definitely going to affect the biosphere that means the life system if there is some problem in the atmosphere let's say there's too much pollution around it would affect atmosphere you would not have pure gases available to breathe in you would not inhale pure oxygen it would affect your body system that means it is affecting the biosphere and there are some changes in the environment which occur naturally they are beyond human hands but most of the changes occurring in the environment or the biosphere they caused by human activities human activities such as pollution from the industries pollution from the automobiles and more pressure on the land by constructing buildings houses 
industries, etc. Students, we just discussed the concept of biosphere, where lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere interact to support the life system on Earth. There we talked about the whole Earth. We talked in the context of the whole Earth. But here, the concept is an ecosystem. What is an ecosystem? Ecosystem where biotic and abiotic components of the Earth are interdependent. That means living and non-living components are interdependent upon each other. But their interdependence is towards their near surroundings. They interact with one another in the near surroundings to meet their needs. Whatever their needs are, they depend on their immediate surroundings. They do not move long distances to fulfill their needs. So these ecosystems can range from a small pond of frogs to the gigantic seas. It could be a small pond of frogs or a huge sea with larger aquatic animals. So now, here is an example of a small ecosystem where the biotic and abiotic components of the environment interact with one another. It is a figure 1.3 given at page number 4 and it shows us an ecosystem of a pond. Here you can see number of animals, birds, grass, water, trees and mountains. You can see a cow drinking water. That means its dependency on hydrosphere. And deer are eating grass. That means for their food, they are dependent upon grass. And grass is grown on what? Soil. And soil is part of what? Lithosphere. So, we discussed lithosphere and hydrosphere. The other sphere of the environment is atmosphere. For our survival, we need oxygen to breathe in, which is available in the atmosphere. So, they are living because they can inhale oxygen. Whereas, the tall trees, for their photosynthesis process, they are dependent upon carbon dioxide, which is available in the atmosphere. Animals release carbon dioxide which can be used by the trees to make their food. So this is how the three spheres that is lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere. They all interact with one another and create the existence of life. Now, the other main important domain of the environment is human environment. Human beings interact with the environment and modify it according to their needs. Earlier humans lived in wooden houses and hunted animals and ate plants. But now is not that time. With the changing times, humans felt the need to change the use of environment in other suitable ways. Human beings started growing crops. They started domesticating animals and they led a settled life. Before that, they hunted animals and ate plants. They did not have a settled life. So this is how with changing times and changing needs, Humans modify their surroundings and change the environment according to their needs. So here we have some of the changes humans made 
in the environment. With the changing time, they started growing crops, domesticated animals, led a settled life instead of being a nomad, moving from one place to another. They invented wheel. With the invention of wheel, movement from one place to another was easy. So it gave a boost to trade, that is, exchanging goods and services from one place to another. Then came the major change that was industrial revolution in the 18th century. Industries established in the European continent and America. They started producing goods at large scale, due to which transportation was required and trade and commerce flourished. Thereafter, information revolution came, which made communication easier and faster across the world. People started using telephones and with changing time, mobiles came, then the internet, use of email, many social networking sites, they made information available throughout the world. And today also, humans have made significant achievements in every field by changing their environment according to their needs. But somewhere, it has caused damage to the environment. There are a number of problems can be seen in the environment today. We talk about global warming. We talk about pollution. We talk about melting of glaciers due to high temperatures. And many other problems related to environment have come up just because of too much involvement of humans to satisfy their needs. So here we end the explanation of Chapter 1, Geography, Environment. Hope you understood the concepts. Thank you all.